the spade of the archaeologist has uncovered the ruins of ancient cities which once flourished in Andhra Pradesh. Amaravati, Dagaya Peta, Bhatti Prolu, Ghanta Sala. Among the most famed was 2,000 year old Nagar Junakonda. of the Krishna River have been flowing through the valley of Sri Parvatam for centuries. Here, in lonely grandeur, was born a great civilization. Not much remains of Vijayapuri, the stately citadel of the Ikshwakus, a powerful dynasty which ruled these parts during the 3rd and 4th centuries AD, that is, after the decline of the Shatavahana kings. Nagarjuna Konda, during the reign of the Ikshwakus, was a centre of art, research and scholarship. From here and from Amaravati, the art of Andhra spread to neighbouring lands in East Asia. The ruins of Nagarjuna Konda, like so many in India, are silent. Who built these noble edifices? What was their exact purpose? At Nagarjuna Konda, so much of the past lies concealed. These bathing huts on the banks of the Krishna probably teemed with life as in Banaras, Hardwar, Nasik and Ujjain. It is likely that the ghats were used by all classes of society, princes, monks and nuns of the Buddhist order, sadhus and common people. It is known that an Ashwamedha Yagna was the traditional sacrifice of a stallion to betoken imperial power. One such was performed here by Shantamula of the Ikshawaku dynasty. It was to record his power over the neighbouring princedoms. Excavations have located the site of this historic sacrificial ceremony. ceremony over, King Shantamula must have taken the ritual bath of purification here, in the Avabhrita tank. Strangely enough, while the Ikshwaku kings were Hindus, their consorts patronized Buddhism. Unstintingly, they gave their treasures to adorn the city of Vijayapuri with innumerable stupas, chaityas and viharas, that is, shrines and monasteries. Something of their generosity and their faith can yet be seen. The most imposing of all the shrines was the Mahachaitya, which embodied the relics of the Buddha. Its building was inspired by the greatest of the consorts, Mahatallavari Attave Shanti Sari. The structure was embellished with these votive pillars raised in groups of five at the four cardinal points. With a diameter of 106 feet, the Mahachaitya was probably 80 feet high. The Chaityas went into the complex of the monastic establishments 
and were designed for the worship of congregations. There were many monasteries in the valley. They were built to an accepted pattern. In these monastic cells, members of the order meditated on the life and teachings of the enlightened one. In this pillared hall, or mandapam, which existed 2,000 years ago, hundreds would gather to partake in religious discourses. On the slope of a hill to the southeast, there lay what we now describe as a quadrangular stadium. It is believed that here, the people of the valley, in their thousands, used to congregate and pay homage to the Buddha, raising their voices in prayer and dedication. Before the time of the Ikshwakus, the valley had gained wide fame as the seat of Buddhist learning. Here taught Acharya Nagarjuna, founder of the Madhyamika school of Buddhist philosophy. The university, with its pillared halls and chaityas, is imposing, even though nothing remains but the faint outlines of its grandeur. Students from all over Asia came to the university, to Acharya Nagarjuna in search of knowledge. The immortal Buddhist divine ruled the church for 57 years and spent the evening of his life here. gospel so brilliantly interpreted and so invigorously taught by the great Nagarjuna made a profound impression on recluse, scholar and artist. This was the art section. Careful and painstaking excavation over recent years brought to light the work of the sculptors who adorned the city. It yielded the first outline sketches of long ago, the lines that gave life to the stone of the valley. loving hands and rare sensitivity, the sculptors of Nagarjuna Konda, 2,000 years ago, told the story of the Shakya prince, the enlightened one, who pointed the way to truth. A sculptured story that is with us to this day. In Tushita heavens, Bodhisattva is urged by the other Bodhisattvas to take birth as the savior of the peoples on earth. Dispel their illusions. Redeem them from the terrors of death. Offer them salvation. Bodhisattva, embodying the virtue of countless ages, descends to earth in the form of a white elephant. A child is born to Queen Maya. 
Prince Siddhartha is born. Wondrous signs are seen by all. Siddhartha grows to manhood, surrounded by worldly pleasures. Prince glimpses the suffering of the world, age, sickness, death. Siddhartha renounces pleasures, gives up his kingdom, severs all ties, becomes a homeless wanderer seeking the salvation of man. Now to Channa, his faithful charioteer, he entrusts his jewels and his royal robes, tokens of his renunciation. He clothes himself in simple garb, the color of the ground, to walk with beggar's bowl in hand. Channa returns to Kapilavastu, bringing the sorrowful tidings to King Sadhodana and the royal family. The lights of the palace lose their luster, but the stars shine brightly in the heavens. Under the Bodhi tree, even Shakyamuni meditated. Mara, lord of the five desires, bringer of death, enemy of truth, called forth his demon armies, his evil spirits, to overwhelm him who would deliver mankind from misery. temptation could sway him. He had attained true enlightenment. He had probed the ultimate truth. He was the Buddha. The story in stone takes us to Sarna near Banaras, where he delivered his first sermon in the Deer Park. Laying down the middle path, the Buddha explained the four noble truths which lead to nirvana, the extinction of self. The first is the existence of sorrow. The second is the cause of suffering, that is, lust. The third is the cessation of sorrow. The fourth is the eightfold path that leads to the cessation of sorrow. Right comprehension, right resolutions, right speech, right acts, right living, right efforts, right thoughts, right meditation. This is the dharma. This is the truth. This is religion. The years passed. Then came the moment of Mahapari Nirvana. The Blessed One leaves this world with his last message. Decay is inherent in all component things, but the truth remains forever. Work out your salvation with diligence. These noble carvings, which adorn the shrines and monasteries of Nagarjuna Konda, lay buried for centuries in the ruins of this great city. They have now been excavated and form a part of our rich archaeological wealth, telling us once again the story of the Shakya prince, the Buddha. The age
age of Nagarjuna Konda was a golden age. It bridges the passage of time, beckoning us to a just society, free from caste and cruelty, to a new world above hate and strife. Vidyut kshanam darshayati prakasham Buddhanubhavena tatha kadachit Lokasya punyeshu matikshanam tyah 